Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Emily, and today I'll be taking us through a little story of Curious George Discovers the Rainbow. Okay, we can get a good look at the picture. George was a good little monkey, very curious. Sometimes curiosity gets a good little monkey lost in the woods, especially when he's chasing leprechauns. Would you believe that that's how Curious George discovered the rainbow? And it all started on a bright, sunny day. Here we can see the next page. It was a beautiful day in the country. Steve and Betsy were visiting from the city for the first time. George couldn't wait for their outdoor adventure to begin, but first they had to unpack. When Betsy dropped her books, George rushed to help her and pick them up. That's when he saw something he had never seen before. Something amazing. Here's our next page. That's a rainbow, George, said Betsy. See the paw of gold at the end and the leprechaun? Rainbows are always the same seven colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Do you guys see the leprechaun in the rainbow? And there we see red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Here's our next page. Rainbows were created by the sun and the rain, Betsy explained, but I can make a rainbow without either. Wanna see? A rainbow inside? George could hardly wait. Betsy used scissors to cut a slit in the center of a sheet of paper. Then she taped the paper over a flashlight and shined the light through a fish bowl full of water. Do you guys see the flashlight? The flashlight is like a sunbeam and the water is like a giant raindrop. The light shined through the water and behold, Betsy said proudly, a rainbow. Here's our next page. George thought Betsy's rainbow was nice, but there was no leprechaun or pot of gold. George wondered if he would ever see a real rainbow that spanned the whole sky. Have you? Have any of you guys seen a rainbow before? He looked out the window. White fluffy clouds floated by. Looks like a nice day, said the man with the yellow hat. Meanwhile, the man helped Steve prepare for a hike. Have you ever seen any wild animals? Steve asked. We've got skunks and deer. I've never, I've even seen a moose or two. The man replied, a moose, Steve said. Now there's something you don't see every day. Here's the next page. And it was time for their hike. Outside, the sun was shining, but the temperature was cooler and more clouds were starting to roll in. I'm driving into town to get some food for dinner, said the man. Just then, thunder grumbled low in the distance. If it rains, head home, he added. George knows the way. Next page. George led them into the forest. I'm not leaving without a picture of the moose, Steve said. Just then he felt a raindrop. Oh no, not rain. Do we have to go back already? I don't think so, Betsy said. It's probably going to stop soon. Look, the sun is already peeking through the clouds. Here's the next page. Sunlight and rain at the same time. Could this be George's lucky day? Sure enough, when he turned around, there was a huge colorful rainbow arcing across the sky. His wish had come true. That's the biggest rainbow I've ever seen, said Betsy. Next page. George was excited to have found a rainbow, but he couldn't see the pot of gold from here. Steve was excited too. I'm climbing this tree to take a picture of the rainbow, he said, scampering high into the branches. Has anyone here ever climbed a tree before? Kind of fun. This page. George needed a better view too. He knew if he was going to find the pot of gold or see a leprechaun, he needed to get closer. 
So what do you think he did? George ran off in search of the rainbow's end with Charky close behind him. Charky, George, wait, Betsy yelled, chasing through the rain. Next page. When Betsy finally caught up with them, George tried to explain that he wanted to reach the pot of gold, but no matter how far or fast Charky ran, the rainbow only got farther and farther away. The leprechaun with a pot of gold is just a fairy tale, said Betsy, but I guess it couldn't hurt to look just in case, said Steve. Um, could it, Steve? But Steve was nowhere in sight. He'll catch up with us, said Betsy. Let's keep going. They hadn't gone far when something small and green hopped through the bushes. Could it be the leprechaun, George thought? He must be getting close to the pot of gold now. But it was only a green fog. Usually George would be happy to meet a frog, but it was no leprechaun. George wasn't disappointed for long though because the frog had led him to a second rainbow. Sorry, George, Betsy said, that's not another rainbow. It's only the reflection of the rainbow on the water. You see how it looks a little different on the water than in the sky? How will we keep chasing the rainbow now? We need to cross the water. Just then, Charky darted through the bushes after the frog and found what they needed most, a boat. Uh-oh, Betsy said as they floated away. How will Steve ever catch up with us now? Meanwhile, Stevie realized he was all alone. Charky, Betsy, George, where are you? Suddenly, something moved in the bushes. What do you think it was? A moose, Steve shouted, snapping a picture. But the moose didn't like Steve's loud voice or his camera. Steve was scared. He was about to call for help when he heard a voice. Back away from the moose slowly, the boy said. It was George's friend, Bill. He knew a lot about the wilderness. And whatever you do, don't frighten it, Bill added. The moose walked off into the forest. Did you know that moose are good swimmers when temperatures rise? They keep cool in the mountain lakes and streams. Moose are also heavy and fast. They weigh up to 1,500 pounds and can run 35 miles an hour. If they feel threatened, they are considered more dangerous than grizzly bears. That's your moose fact for the day. When the coast was clear, Bill introduced himself. I'm Bill. And you're lucky I found you. Moose can be really dangerous, but we know that now. Hey, I'm Steve, he said to Bill. Since you're so good at finding things, maybe you can help me find my sister and our friend George. I know George, Bill said. I saw, follow me, I saw his friend in town. Bill help us. There's the man with the yellow hat. Steve, said the man. Where are Betsy, Charky, and George? We got separated in the woods, Steve said. I don't know where they went. Just then, sp something sparkly caught his eye. More rainbows. Oh yeah, Steve remembered. George saw a rainbow right before they ran off. If I know George, I bet he went to find the gold at the end of the rainbow. I have an idea to help him get home, the man said. What do you guys think they're gonna do to get George home? Next page. When George, Betsy, and Sharky reached the shore, daylight was fading and so was the rainbow. George knew they needed to get home before dark. There was only one problem. He didn't know where they were anymore. Suddenly, Sharky began to bark. Something was glowing from the end of the rainbow. It must be their pot of gold. George, Betsy, and Charky raced toward the light. George, over here, called the man with the yellow balloon. It's not a yellow hat, it's the yellow balloon. He was standing on the roof of their house holding a bright, shiny balloon that was wearing a very familiar yellow hat. But I guess you could see how that looks like a pot of gold from afar because they're both yellow and shiny. 
George was happy to be home with his friends. There was no pot of gold, but he knew he had found the real treasure at the end of the rainbow. And that's our story. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Once again, I hope you guys were able to learn a little bit about rainbows and the outdoors and the woods, and more importantly, about Curious George. <laughs>